Due to the combination of the market's rebound plus new savings, 401k balances on average are back to where they were or now exceed their levels before the recession and the financial crisis. But while that's encouraging, it doesn't necessarily mean that 401k owners are where they need to be in order to have enough savings to retire comfortably. And in fact, a study just released by the Employee Benefits Research Institute found that as many as 14% of baby boomer and Gen Xer households who otherwise would have had sufficient income to cover basic expenses in retirement are now at risk of running short because of the housing and financial crisis. Now, remember, we're not talking about 14% of Boomer and Gen X households overall. We're talking about 14% of those who are actually on track for a comfortable retirement before the crisis. Unfortunately, by Ebre's estimates, roughly 40% to 50% of Boomer and Gen X households were at risk of running short even before the economy and the markets fell apart. Which raises the question, what steps can you now take to increase your chances of having a secure retirement even if you were one of those people whose retirement readiness was already lagging before the you-know-what hit the fan. Basically, there are three steps you can take. The first and most effective is to boost the amount you contribute to your 401k or other retirement accounts. For example, the Ebre study found that if at-risk early boomers saved an additional 1% to 4% of pay between now and retirement, that might give them a large enough nest egg to avoid running short. But the amount you may need to save could be higher or lower than this, depending on such factors as your age, how much you already have socked away, and how sure you want to be of having adequate income in retirement. So to get a more customized estimate of how much you should be putting away on a regular basis, I suggest you go to an online calculator like our retirement planner. You can run scenarios with a variety of savings rates and see how each affects your likelihood of being able to generate the income you'll need once you retire. The second thing you can do is stay on the job longer. This step helps in several ways. Your savings have a few more years to grow, both from additional contributions to 401ks and the like, and from investment returns. By working and postponing Social Security, you also get a bigger Social Security check, generally about 8% larger for each year you delay. To see how much extra income you might receive by working longer, you can go to Social Security's Retirement Estimator tool. The third step you can take is to reassess your investing strategy. Now, I have to caution you that if you're already investing sensibly, you may not be able to squeeze much more return out of your portfolio without taking on additional risk. The problem is that if you do that by, say, increasing the amount of stock you own or putting more money into riskier assets like emerging markets or high-yield bonds, you also face the possibility of stomach-wrenching setbacks, which is something you definitely don't want late in your career when you have less time to regain lost ground. So if you're going to make changes in this area, be careful and focus on places where you may be able to boost returns without taking undue risk, such as replacing high-fee investments with low-cost ones, like index funds. You can find low-cost investing options in our Money70 list of recommended funds. And to see how different mixes of stocks and bonds might affect both the risk and return you earn, and what size nest egg you might end up with, check out Morningstar's Asset Allocator tool on the T. Rowe Price website. So whether you were on track for retirement before 2008 and the financial crisis set you back, or you were behind even before the economy and markets went kerflui, the important thing is that you do all you can now to get on course toward a secure retirement. And the three steps I just outlined are a great way to start.